Okay, here I am again, making a post about the American anarchist in response to a handful of his more outrageous claims, and still unsure really as to why I'm wasting time with this. I've actually devoted more minutes to to uh, dealing with him over the last three days than I think he's had viewers, and so I I don't know really why. And he makes an outrageous claim, one among many, really. And it is this, he says that if you support the state and you don't repent, then you're going to go to hell. Now, first and foremost, he's making a, a very gross logical fallacy here. And that's one of equivocation. He's equivocating throughout his entire video the idea of statism and the notion that the state has a legitimate function in society. Okay? So he, he's equivocating the two. He's saying, oh, if you believe that the state has a legitimate function in society, therefore you must be a statist and you're worshipping the state. Well, that's, that's just the grossest of straw man and shows that he hasn't even taken even a one-on-one course in logic or in biblical hermeneutics or anything of that nature. And so, so I, I don't know where he gets off on the idea other than he's working off of the, this, this presupposition of anarchism. He really is. His religion is not Christianity. His religion is anarchism. And this shines forth when he talks about how a, an atheist, someone who denies God, rejects him, rejects Jesus Christ, but he's an anarchist, that that person would have greater hope of entering heaven than someone who may be, let's say, a devout Christian, but otherwise believes in the, that there is a such thing as a legitimate authority for the state. That that person has less of a chance of going to heaven than the, the, you know, anarchist who happens to be a raging atheist. I mean, that's just, the guy, the guy is off his rocker. The thing is, it has absolutely no biblical support at all. None. And he keeps saying over and over that, well, I've got uh, support from Jesus, you know, Jesus was an anarchist. What are you talking about Jesus was an anarchist? What are you talking about? He condemned certain, certain individuals, okay, who were leaders of religious sect. But what did he tell his apostles to do? Did he tell them, hey, just get rid of uh, organized religion completely? Is that what he said? No. No. He said, listen to what they say. Because they sit in the seat of Moses. Now, what's the seat of Moses, Scott? What's the seat of Moses? Do you even have a clue? I don't think you do. Okay? It's religious authority. These people have legitimate religious authority. So they had to at least listen. Don't do as they do, the hypocritical things they do. But don't deny their legitimate authority. You, on the other hand, want to say that Jesus denied their legitimate authority. Now, the other, the other point is this. If Jesus didn't believe in legitimate authority, why in the world would he even reference the notion of keys to the kingdom? Even if you don't want to believe the Catholic and historical understanding of that doctrine, even if you don't want to believe that, and you want to go ahead and believe some, some heresy, whatever you want to believe pertaining to keys and binding and loosing and everything else, if you even had the slightest clue as to what the keys were or binding and loosing was, you would know that he wasn't saying that there was no such thing as organized religion and that we shouldn't have organized religion at all. You wouldn't even say that. Heaven forbid. What about Jesus, right? Let's go back, let, let's get back to Jesus. Jesus sits here, he doesn't deny, even at his death, he does not deny the legitimate function of Pontius Pilate as an authority. He says this though, you wouldn't have authority if God didn't give it to you. But he doesn't deny his function of authority. He doesn't deny the legitimacy of his ruling. He's simply saying, your ruling, your authority to rule in the first place wouldn't even be real, wouldn't even be here. We're not for God. That's what he's saying. Lastly, on Jesus. Okay, Jesus says, once again, now I mentioned this before, of course you never deal with it because you simply can't. The, this, this anarchist concept, you know, if you have a problem with your brother, go to him and, uh, and, and deal with that. And then if you um, have, if, if the person still doesn't hear you, then you can go ahead and bring two or three people. If the person still doesn't hear you, bring him to what? The church. Okay, well, we can get into the, the this debate. I'll actually put a, a link up on whatever side here 
a link up to a blog where I, I talk about the necessary preconditions for this passage to even make sense. And it would require an organized religion and, an, and a unified standard with a unified understanding of that standard by which they can make a ruling. And that that ruling would be so binding that that person would be considered a heathen outside of the church. So you have to, you have to literally rape the Gospels, which is what you're doing for your anarchist ends. You're raping the Gospels. You're mutilating everything sacred in, in, in Holy Scripture, and you're doing it because you believe in anarchy. And anarchy, not Christianity, is your religion. You don't understand this, though. You don't have the slightest clue because you haven't studied. What you do is you walk around and you just open your mouth, blah, 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 and you never think for a second as to whether or not if anything you're saying is even legitimate. Well, of course it is because you said it. Of course it is. Everybody else, oh, they're burning in hell. Like you said, if you support the state in any way, you're burning in hell. Boy, that leaves heaven, I think, heaven's got maybe ten people in it right now. Ten of these anarchist guys in it. Everybody else is burning in hell. This, this is interesting. This is interesting. You say that if you believe in the state, you're breaking the Ten Commandments. That's what you say. You say that you're breaking the first commandment because you have another God. That's only if you're a statist and you worship the state, not if you recognize the legitimate function of the state. Remember, in the Old Testament itself, in the Old Testament, you have rules in, in the law, the law of God, that the New Testament and Christ recognizes as the law of God. The law of God itself has rules pertaining to the function of the state. Why don't you pick up, why don't you pick up a book on... on uh, Christian economic theory. You're a Protestant, you can pick up a Protestant one, I don't care. Go pick up something by Gary North. I'd rather have you believe stuff like Gary North than, than be some ridiculous anarchist. I really would. At least concerning economic matters and everything else. But he goes and he looks at the Old Testament and says, well this is what the Old Testament says about economics. And he would side with you on the concept of free trade. He, actually, he's on Lou Rockwell. He's one of the contributors. Look him up. Gary North. He writes books on Christian economics. You've got David Chilton. You've got those other ones. On the Catholic side, you've got plenty of authors on that side. The thing is, each and every one of them talk about the legitimate function of the state. They go back to the Old Testament. You find the legitimate function of a king. You have the concept of, of the hierarchy of the church. You have the concept of, of an appeals court given in the Old Testament law. In fact, if you go back, what does Moses say? When Moses is, is said and done with all these laws, he sits there and he says that other nations are going to see these rules, see these laws, and realize how just and how righteous they are, and that they too would want to adopt them. Now, why, why would they want to do that if it has a bunch of stuff concerning the state and the function of the state, concerning war? There's rules pertaining to just war. It doesn't condemn war. Okay, killing, you go in and say, thou shalt not kill. Oh, okay, now, you have to understand, the Ten Commandments, it's a general law, thou shalt not kill. Now, God wasn't ridiculous like you, see. God went on two chapters, the next two or three chapters, dealing with specific case laws to explain how the Ten Commandments applied. So he distinguished between, let's say, manslaughter and murder. Premeditated murder. There's a difference between them. There's a difference between a man killing an, a, a, a man and an animal killing a man. Okay, there's a difference. There's a difference in the way that the state would punish that human or that animal, depending on the kind of crime. So it's not about killing. And then to talk about how to, go, how to conduct yourself in time of war and everything else, obviously it wasn't invalid. God commanded people to go to war. If that was the case, is God commanding people to sin? I mean, you're, truth is, you've gone, from, you've gone from at least being within the fold to now you're not only a schismatic, but you are a flaming and raging heretic. And you actually go online and you try to promote your gross heresies. For what? For anarchism? For a utopia and a pipe dream? Is that really what, is that really what this is all about?